Good morning. Today we're picking up where we left off last time. This means carefully removing the teak deck with 40 to 50 centimeter strips and then scraping away all the rubbery glue as best as we can. Grinding off all the existing bolts and then welding all the holes closed. A super snazzy engineer thought it would be a good idea to have the table leg go all the way through the deck, with the necessary chance of leaks as a result. The support beam has thus been given the full load, I mean, I will have to weld in a new piece here for sure. A little logo of a boat gives me an indication of where the front and the top is of the piece I plan to weld. Then I lay my new piece of steel over the existing true hole and trace it out with an angle grinder. This gives me a nice negative of the new steel and a perfect spacing for a penetrating weld. I 45 the seams of the weld and then clean everything up nicely for a perfect welding environment. From today onwards I have the luxury of working with a semi-automatic or a MIG mag welder and I can assure you that it has sped up my workflow tremendously. My welds look way better and as you can see by the look on my face, I'm truly happy with the progression. Yeah, the never ending story of grinding, prepping and welding. Awesome. Mm. <laughs> On some parts the glue comes off in large pieces. Whereas anywhere else, I need to work it a lot harder. And then my new toy comes into play. I managed to buy this machine second hand of a facade cleaning company. Now I cross my fingers and hope it works on a 60 year old boat as well. The machine blows out water under a very high pressure and thus creates a vacuum that sucks in river sand through the second hose. It leaves me with a perfect finish for further treatment. The seat, however, is an optional extra. It's highly advised, but it sells separately. But
Lacking some daylight, see, the sun's going down there. But I'm um, super happy about my machinery. Cheers. And just when you think you're completely done, you discover a few more hidden holes. So, this is what I'm left with. Very pleased with the result. The little bit of rust you see is called fly rust. I did that on purpose. Um, I'll be using a product called Rainex, or no, Ramex. Um, rust Buster. And I'll be spraying that on and leaving it on for about 12 to 24 hours, we'll see. So, uh, thank you Project Brewpack for the, uh, the tip. See how far this brings me. As you can see, the rust converter did its job. So it converted, it chemically bonded the iron oxide, or the rust if you will, and formed an adherent layer. This layer is now protected from further corrosion and a perfect solid base for me to paint on. I'm now gonna clean it up with a wire brush, just get all the loose flakes off, then vacuum it, and then it's ready for paint. So the paint I'll be using is a two component uh, paint system. I have to mix it at a ratio of four to one and um, I'm gonna apply it as a primer as well as a base layer. I can do um, two to three layers on anything above the water and then three, four or five layers for the bilges and for anything that touches the water. Once the paint is fully cured, it leaves a very hard finish. Tools and I fiddle with a multimeter. See you there. <laughs> 